So we've come to Dalwini Wines in the Pyrenees. Uh, unfortunately, there was no one there to serve us. So we, we came up, called out a few times. They had all the, all the wines nicely laid out for us to try to do the tasting or the tasting notes. But no one was in Kui of being able to try the wine. So we've come all the way here, beautiful grounds, crap service. I guess you better come on a weekend. Um, we've just been to Taltani in the Pyrenees and they have a beautiful um, cellar door. They've got a lot of surrounding area. They've got picnic tables and they've got um, uh, wines by the glass and just in general it's really nice. They've got a huge range of wines there. Their sparklings are mostly sourced out of Tasmania and they do supplement some of their other grapes with some other Tasmanian um, grapes but they do have a lot of predominantly Pyrenees varieties as well like the Shiraz and the Cab Sav. Um, they have an entry level sparkling which is the tea series which I haven't seen in the bottle shops and that's really really tasty for the price anyway it's only $15 a bottle um, a lot of their wines are available at various bottle shops and places all over the place but they do have a few seller only items um, Tim's just picked up a 1994 Cab Sav which we're hoping to have with dinner tonight and we'll let you know how that goes uh, but all in all I would give it a pretty good star rating and um, I would recommend coming for a visit so we've just been to Summerfield Wines in the Pyrenees Great little place, uh, very welcoming cellar door. Uh, unfortunately, I only had three things on tasting because they've sold out of everything else. So they're a very popular winery. All they had left was a, uh, a Saint Blanc 07, a Shiraz Merlot mix called the Tradition, and their 07 Shiraz Reserve. All of which were very nice. In particular, I like the, uh, the the Reserve. Very tasty if you can get hands of, uh, your hands on it, though they are running out. Um, they've got the bottling truck here at the moment, so they're quite a busy winery just at the moment. But uh, Summerfield Wineries had a very opening and happy feel to it and what wines they did have were quite impressive. We're going to be coming back here, first chance we get, to find out what the rest of their series is like when they come to release in March. Well hey, well we're still in the Pyrenees, in fact we're at Blue Pyrenees which is the oldest commercial vineyard in the area of the Pyrenees and also the biggest. It's got 170 hectares under vine. It covers an unseeable amount of distance uh, and looks very pretty at this particular time of year. Uh, to reflect that they have a fairly monstrous tasting list um, and wine spread from one end of the counter to the other. Uh, so we didn't even get to try all of what we had there. Um, but they do do a decent range of their sparklings. Uh, so I suggest if you're going to come here, make sure you try those. Um, and their reserve range is also pretty good, uh, although at the, the Richardson, which is members only purchase in theory, is $50. Those ones I don't think quite live up to the, um, the price of $50 a bottle, but their general reserve limited release range does have some, uh, some top quality in there. In particular, my favourite was the uh, reserve Shiraz, uh, $32, I'd be going there. Um, yeah, if you get a chance to come here, I think as an overall range, they have a pretty solid uh, solid setting up uh, across the board. They're pretty good with just a, a few peaks and a few troughs. Um, so if you're in the Pyrenees area, it's the biggest one here with the biggest range to taste. Uh, so come on along and uh, they do a good lunch on the weekends. Uh, we've just been into Mount Avoca in the Pyrenees and had a lovely time tasting wine. They've got an excellent cellar door with excellent service. Um, the wine, some of them lack a little, little bit of complexity, but um, I think their sparkling at $20 is well worth it. And also they've got a $12 Trios Red and um, it is absolutely beautiful. It's, it's far more complex than you'd expect for a $12 Red and I'll be taking some away with me. Um, they also have beautiful grounds and a cheese platter which we've just enjoyed and we're now playing a little game of boules or boule or whatever you'd like to call it. And that wasn't my best shot but I did win before. So as an addendum to the museum wines at Taltani, uh, you might have seen that rack there that uh, had all the older ones on it. I picked up a 94 Cab Sav as we mentioned before. So just the go on that is that it was pretty much past its uh, best date. Um, being a 94, 15 years old, they had some there as far back as 85. So my little warning to you would be maybe 85 is a little too old. Uh, for the Taltanis, pick up something uh, a little after 94 would be my suggestion. 
94 was meant to be one of the better vintages. Uh, it was still having a lot of flavours and stuff at the, the front and middle palate, but the back palate had sort of gone off, uh, lost its life. It was just a little lifeless. The flavours were still there, but just no zing that you'd sort of hope to get from the full complexity. It's gone over the hill. So uh, there you go. Word of warning on the uh, museum wines.